How far can you talk on that thing? That's the question I get most often when people see me operating my ham radios like this Baofeng or this Kenwood. And the answer, like a lot of things in ham radio, is complicated. In this video, I'm going to do three things. I'm going to talk about the range you can get radio to radio using a small handheld like this with only five watts and what impacts that range. Then I'm going to talk about all the infrastructure that the ham radio community has built up to extend that range, like repeaters, satellites, and the internet, digital voice. Finally, I'm going to set up and try to make a contact simplex, that's radio to radio, see how far I can get, and then I'll make a contact using my local club repeater. I hope you find this interesting. Let's get going. First off, let me give you a specific answer. The furthest I've ever talked to anyone, radio to radio, using this Kenwood THD 74 and this diamond antenna is 64 miles. I was on a mountaintop and so were the people I was talking to. But 64 miles radio to radio, that's great. I made a video of this contact. If you want to see it, there's a link in the description. For this video, I'm going to be focusing on using handheld transceivers like this Kenwood and my Baofang using FM voice modulation on the two meter band. Now in the US, the two meter band runs from 144 to 148 megahertz, and you need a technician class license to use those frequencies. People who are really serious about doing long distance work on the two meter band, well, they'll be using higher power radios. They'll be using multi-element directional antennas and they'll be doing single sideband, which is a voice modulation that uses less bandwidth than FM, so it can go further. We're not gonna be talking about that today. We're gonna to be doing FM handheld. The biggest factor in the range with a radio like this is line of sight. Two meter radio waves travel pretty much straight till they get past the horizon and that's it. So does your antenna have a clear path to the antenna of the person you want to talk to? That's going to be the biggest factor in determining the range. If there's a hill between you and your friend, you're not going to even be able to get a mile. If there's a giant building or a bunch of trees, that's also going to really limit the range you have with a radio like this. But if you're on a dry lake bed, well now there's nothing blocking those radio signals and you'll be able to get dozens of miles. The next biggest factor in determining the range of a radio like this Kenwood is the antenna. The stock rubber duck antennas that come with many of today's two meter radios are just okay at best. Upgrading the antenna will make a difference. Now, it won't extend the range if there's a mountain between you and your friend, and it won't extend the range if you're in the middle of a bunch of buildings. But if you're on that dry lake bed, having a good antenna will certainly extend your range by several, maybe even a dozen miles. A good two meter antenna will be mounted outdoors, high up, and clear of any obstructions. Here's a cheap solution for you if you're looking for one. You can get one of these mag mount antennas that are meant to go on top of your car. And if you have metal flashing uh, around your chimney or around your roof somewhere up high, you can just pop this on there uh, and, and make it work for you. Just be careful how long you run the coax because with, uh, with the two meter radio signals, the longer the coax, the more uh, power loss you'll have uh, while transmitting. And if you don't have a metal roof or a shed roof you can put this on, well, just get yourself a pie plate like this, put it in the middle, then you can run this up into a tree five, 10 feet or so, and use that. This works great. You do need a metal base though for these mag mount antennas because it acts as the ground plane. Um, that's how antennas work. The last factor in determining the range of a handheld radio is power. Uh, people like to advertise that they have eight watts or 10 watts, but honestly, the difference between five and eight or even five and 10 is marginal, very small difference. If you're out on that dry lake bed, yeah, it might give you more punch and give you a couple extra miles, but in most cases, line of sight and the antenna you're using are gonna play a much bigger role than the amount of power you're putting out. There are a few rare atmospheric conditions that can extend the range of your two meter transmission hundreds or maybe even over a thousand miles away. The first is called sporadic E. It's called sporadic because it doesn't happen very often and E because it takes place in the E layer 
of the atmosphere. What happens is a small amount of gas, like the size of a cloud, becomes highly ionized. And all of a sudden, the two meter radio signals will bounce back to Earth off of that cloud of ionized gas. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it can last from a couple minutes up to a couple hours. And it's great because it will reflect those signals and you can get, again, hundreds of miles or maybe even a thousand miles with your two meter signal. It can happen any time of year, but it's definitely more common late June into uh, July and August. The other rare atmospheric condition that can extend the range of your two meter communications is called tropoducting or tropospheric ducting. It happens in the troposphere, which is closer to Earth. And when you have uh, different conditions like different masses or temperatures or humidities in air masses, it can create like a duct where the two meter signal will just duct on through and go hundreds or even thousands of miles away. Again, this is pretty rare but it happens in late summer and the fall more often than the other parts of the year. Uh, with tropospheric ducting, people are able to talk from California to Hawaii, and have talked from the Northeast US like New York to Florida. Now let's talk about all the infrastructure hams around the world have built up to extend the range of two meter radio communication. And the first and most common are repeaters. Repeaters are pretty much everywhere. Uh, you should almost always, at least in the continental U.S., be within range of one repeater. Uh, maybe out in the sticks somewhere pretty far out you wouldn't, but in most cases, in most places, you'll be in the range of at least one repeater. Repeaters do exactly what they sound like. They listen on one frequency for signals coming in, and they retransmit that on a different frequency. Now, you can program these frequencies into your radio. It's pretty easy to transmit on one frequency and receive on the other so you can operate on these repeaters. Repeaters tend to be in great spots, on mountaintops, on buildings, on towers. It extends their range. Therefore, if you have line of sight to the repeater, it would extend your range. With your typical repeater, your range can be dozens of miles. If you're on the far side of the repeater and you're talking to somebody on the other, you can talk dozens of miles, maybe even a hundred or more miles depending on the location where you are, the person you're talking to, and the repeater in between you. Repeaters are set up and maintained by individual hams or ham radio clubs, and they should be free to use. Although, if you've got one local that you're gonna be using all the time, it's a great idea to go ahead and join that club or offer your assistance to the repeater owner and operator. All right, so I'm gonna fire up the local repeater. I don't know how far away it is. I think it's maybe, uh, nine, 10 miles away, but I have no problem getting into it. I'm just gonna use uh, my Kenwood THD 74 and this diamond antenna. I'm gonna call out and see if there's anyone who wants a, a quick chat. K4 BBL, is anyone around for a quick chat? This is the NF4TA repeater. That's the repeater signaling that it got my signal and uh, it, it just transmits its ID. BBL, this is KK4JYO, UR59. Hey Fred, yeah, you're 592, uh, it's Brian here. How you doing today? I'm all right, yeah, I didn't recognize your call. Uh, as I do most calls, I don't recognize, but that's just me. But uh, yeah, it sounds good, you got a little tiny bit of hash back there of some kind, but uh, you're coming in, you know, solid, no problem. All right, Fred. Well, I'm going to say 7-3. I'm sure I'll catch you on a repeater again soon. This has been Brian, K4BBL. Uh, clear on your final. 7-3. Hey, Brian. Good luck. Have fun. Uh, enjoy playing. Uh, <laughs> I'll be uh, on the Kiso party this weekend uh, playing in my dungeon. Brian, 73. Uh, keep playing, and we'll talk to you later. This is kk 4 jyo Repeaters may also require a subsonic, meaning you can't hear it, tone to activate the repeater. These are often called PL tones. There's a couple other different names for them. But those are also easy to program into your radio and it's just like an underlying tone under your voice that the repeater picks up and says, oh, uh, this person, this transmission should be repeated. Ham radio operators don't just stick repeaters on tall buildings and towers. They've actually sent repeaters into low earth orbit. There are tiny little cube satellites out there that act just like the repeaters on Earth, but from low Earth orbit. 
Now, because these run low power and because they're pretty far away, you're probably going to want something like an Aero or uh, build your own Yagi antenna to focus your RF energy to make sure you can hit those orbiting repeaters. Now, what does this do for your range? Well, typically it'll cover at least half the continent, but if you've got the right gear, the right setup, and you coordinate with somebody, my club's ex-president actually made a contact from Georgia in the Southeast US to Alaska using a satellite. Now they had to coordinate this very carefully, find the right satellite pass that was going between them. And for each, it was just over the horizon, but they were able to complete a two meter contact using a satellite from uh, opposite sides of the continent. Really cool stuff. Because your typical ham radio satellite pass is short, two minutes to 10 minutes, there's not a lot of chit chat going on on these repeaters. Usually it happens very quickly. People exchange call signs and grid squares and acknowledge each other's transmission and it all happens very quickly. Finally, let's talk about digital voice in the internet. Hams have multiple platforms of either digitizing uh, transmissions or using the internet to extend the range of a radio like this Kenwood to basically anywhere on the world. First, we'll talk about Echolink. Echolink has uh, software clients as well as mobile apps that allow you to connect to repeaters all over the world. And when you transmit using your phone or PC headset, your voice will come out on the repeater just like you were standing right under it with a handheld radio like this. And you can make contacts all over the world. Not every repeater is Echolink connected, but a lot are. You can also use your handheld radio, like this Kenwood or a Baofeng, to connect to an Echolink repeater. So if you've got an Echolink repeater in your neighborhood, you can actually jump on that repeater, you can send it some codes, and you can link your repeater with a repeater on the other side of the country or the other side of the world, and your voice will come out both on your local repeater and that distant repeater that you linked. I've got a video where I did this. I'll put a link in the description and you can check out how I used Echolink in a handheld to talk to people on the other side of the country. Next, let's talk about digital voice. Unfortunately, hams haven't figured out which format they want to go with. So there's three major digital voice encoders, D-Star, DMR, and System Fusion. This Kenwood THD74 has D-Star built in. What it does is instead of modulating your voice using FM, it modulates it digitally. Now you can use digital voice, radio to radio simplex. Uh, if you and your friend both have a D-Star or DMR radio, you can talk using digital voice modulation, radio to radio. There's also some digital repeaters where they'll have D-Star or DMR or both, and you can use that repeater with digital voice. It sounds better. And finally, you can actually have a small repeater in your house that will be connected directly to the internet to allow you to use the internet functionality of digital voice. All three of the major digital voice platforms connect to the internet, and you can use that connection to come out on specified repeaters anywhere in the world, or join virtual chat rooms, if you will, uh, that are server-based chat rooms where you know multiple people will join in. It's kind of like a ham conference call. Multiple people will join in and you can talk to people from all over. And there's, there's local conferences, uh, statewide conferences, nationwide and worldwide conferences that you can join 24 hours a day. And uh, these digital voice systems, especially the uh, conferences, tend to be more chit chat oriented. People talk about their lives, uh, their weather, what they're doing you know, on the day. So a lot of chit chat on digital voice, but I think it's great. It gives technician class license holders a way to talk to people, use their ham radios to talk to people on the other side of the planet. And it also allows uh, hams who are stuck in uh, HOAs or condos or apartments, a way to talk to long distance contacts without having to set up an HF station. A lot of people will say, ah, it's, it's just like Skype or whatever. Not really. Yeah, it's the same technology. It's voice over IP, but you have to be licensed. And a lot of the conversations revolve around ham radio. To make a simplex, a radio to radio contact, I've moved up to a different location, a little higher up, a little further away from a building. And instead of a rubber duck antenna, I'm using this roll up J pole. Some people call them slim gyms. Uh, it's about three feet long and I've got it hanging from a tree. Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima. K4, BBL, calling CQ. CQ, CQ on uh, 146.52, Simplex. 
K4 BBL calling CQ, CQ, CQ from Milton, Georgia. I'm also going to turn off the squelch in case a low signal comes in. If the signal isn't strong enough to break squelch, I still want to be able to hear it. CQ, 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 K4, BBL, Kilo, 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima from Milton, Georgia on 146.52. I didn't make a contact, but that's all right. Typically, a simplex contact of that would be a couple miles to maybe 10, depending on where they were. If you catch somebody who's up on a mountain, it can be much more. But just normal people driving around in their cars, you might get a couple miles at best. That's it. That's the video. We did the three things. We talked about the range you can get with a handheld uh, ham radio and what affects that range. We talked about the, all the different infrastructure that hams have built up to extend that range. And I made one contact at least with uh, a club member off a repeater. Didn't have any luck with Simplex, but that's okay. Still tried. Uh, tried again some other time. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave me a like, put a comment down, share it with uh, maybe some other hams you know. I'd appreciate it. This is K4BBL73. I'm clear.